call. <coughs> Prostrating at the lotus feet of Brahmanishta Sadguru Shrotriya Sri Swami Virajeshwara Saraswati and the entire Guru Parampara on behalf of all of us. Today's discourse on Viveka Chudamani will continue. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Mahasarswatya Namaha Sadashiva Samarambham Shri Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Paramparam Shruti Spruti Purana Malayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Kruto Vande Bhagavanta Upuna Punaha Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Pranatos Miham Om Namo Bhagavate Virajeshwaraya Hari Om Last time the Shloka number 412, we had stopped here. So from Shloka number 413, today's discourse on Viveka Shudamani will continue by the grace of the Sadhguru himself. In these shlokas, the next set of shlokas and the previous two shlokas, Sri Shankar Bhagavad Pada was mainly, he mainly is concentrating and explaining the ultimate significance of Atma Jnana or Brahma Jnana. In other words, in our simple terms, the, the uh, realization and its Kala, the importance of realization or salvation and the reward of that or in significance of uh, realization itself. And uh, last time, the last uh, verse, the bigger one, it was stopped at the keywords Acharya explaining to his disciple who is the Uttama, Uttamottam Adhikari, Uttama Jijnasu, a qualified disciple, that how at the dawn of the jnana itself, during the final stages of sadhana, a mumukshu or a jijnasu or the spiritual aspirant should behave or should concentrate on certain subtle points of Vedanta. And uh, the key words he used was shariram arat Shavavat nirastam punarna sandhatta idam mahatma. The word mahatma is used by Acharya himself. Sloka number 414. Punarna sandhatta idam mahatma. We had stopped there last time. So the point simply was told was Mahatma here means actually the realized master himself, Tattvavetta himself, Brahmajnani himself, Atmajnani himself. So after this Akshatkar, after realizing the true identity of himself, that he is nothing but the same Pratyagatma Sarupa, no more no more he is identifying himself with the body-mind complex. This is Thula Sharira and the subtle Sharira or Linga Sharira, including the Karana Sharira, the causal body. So he detaches himself from the physical body concept, from the subtle body concept and the causal body concept totally, totally, once for all, the detachment is 100% perfect. He is no more attached to the body complex. As all of us, without our knowledge from birth to death, we are all, we are all bound by this, what is called as a 
subtle most sharira abhimana we are attached to our body mind complex we always think that i am this particular body of the particular gender with a particular name fame and status there is a jnani is beyond this concept of identifying himself with a body anymore so please bear in your mind that here acharya is explaining the highest the pinnacle of the truth and subsequently the effect of the dawn of the jnana in the behavior of a jnani outwardly he looks the same but there is a total inner transformation the vision has completely taken a totally different change at all there is the perception is different like the way we perceive worldly matters the way we consider ourselves as a body with a name and status because of the ego factor jnani is no more he is beyond the ego factor he is beyond the body fact so that is the point so after realization acharya says the word mahatma here he is no more he he will no more accept the body as mine that is the point that is the point punarna sandhatta idam mahatma punarna sandhatta idam idam means this body this body means body mind complex he will not accept na sandhatta idam he will not accept that i am this body in him so that was the point because this body for him for a jnani it is a shavavat swarupa it is like a corpse the body is there today once the prana sanchara goes out of the body along with the jivatma or the jiva the, the body becomes a dead body a corpse and it will decay it will be destroyed so that attachment from that sense for a jnani is no more he, see the idea last time it was explained for a jnani his own body is like a corpse this point very difficult for people like common men common people like us to understand why acharya calls it as shavavat the body is like a corpse not for you and me it is for a jnani the way the jnani looks at it. so that is the point we'll come to that little slightly little later the same point <coughs> next uh, the shloka here satata vimala bodhananda roopam samitya tyaja jada mala roopo padhimetam sudure atha punarapi naisha smaryatam vanta vastu sparana vishaya bhutam kalpate kutsunaya सतत विमल बोधानंद समीत्यज जडमल रूपोपाधिमेत सुदूरे अथ पुनरपि नैश स्मर्यतांतवस्तु स्मरण विषय भूत कल्पते कुत्सनाया आचार्य श्लोक ज्ञानिया ದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿಯ ಸಮಯದಲ್ಲಿ ಮತ್ತು ಜ್ಞಾನ ಉಂಟಾದ ನಂತರ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿಯ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಏನು ಆ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸ್ವರೂಪವಾದ ಆ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ರೂಪವಾದಂತಹ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮವನ್ನ ಹೊಂದಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಅನುಭವಿಸಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಆಗಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕರಿಸಿಕೊಂಡ ಮೇಲೆ ಜಡ ಮಲಿನ ರೂಪವಾದಂತಹ ಈ ಸ್ಥೂಲ ದೇಹವನ್ನ ಅವರು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಬಿಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗೆ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ನೀನು ಸಹ ಇದನ್ನು ನೆನ್ಪಿಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ತ್ಯಜ ಜಡ ಮಲ ರೂಪೋಪಾದಿ ಮೇತಂ ಸುದೂರೆ ಈ ಮಲಿನವಾದ ಜಡವಾದ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಯೋಜಕವಾದ 
ಶವ ರೀತಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಈ ದೇಹಾಭಿಮಾನವನ್ನ ನೀನು ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಡು ಈಗಲೇ ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಡು ಈಗಲೇ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ದೂರದಿಂದ ಇದನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಡು ನಾನು ಇಂಥ ದೇಹ ನಾನು ಇಂಥವನು ಇಂಥವಳು ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನು ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಡು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ ಒಮ್ಮೆ ನಾನು ದೇಹ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಭಾವನೆ ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಇದನ್ನ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ರ ದೇಹ ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ರ ದೇಹ ಅನ್ನೋ ಭಾವನೆಯನ್ನು ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಡ ಬಹಳ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಗಮನಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಥ ಪುನರಪೆ ನೈಷ ಸ್ಮರ್ಯತಾಂ ವಂತ ವಸ್ತು ಸ್ಮರಣ ವಿಷಯ ಭೂತಂ ಕಲ್ಪತೆ ಕುರ್ಸನಾಯ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಒಂದು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದವನ್ನು ಸವಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಹೊಂದಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಈ ದೇಹದ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಭಿಮಾನ ಬೇಡ ಇದನ್ನ ಮರೆತು ಬಿಡು ದೂರ ತಳ್ಳಿ ಹಾಕು ಯಾಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಹದಿಂದ ಉತ್ಪತ್ತಿ ಆಗ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಕೆಲವು ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಹಾರ ಜೀರ್ಣವಾಗದೆ ತಿಂದ ಆಹಾರ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆದಾಗ ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ತುಂಬಿದಾಗ ವಾಂತಿ ಬರೋ ಸಹಜ ಸಣ್ಣ ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲಿ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ವಾಂತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ದೇಹದ ಒಳಗಿಂದನೇ ಬಂದಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ವಸ್ತು ಆದರೆ ಆ ವಾಂತಿಯನ್ನು ನಾವು ನೋಡಿದರೆ ನಮ್ಮದೇ ವಾಂತಿಯನ್ನ ಸ್ಮರಿಸಿದರೆ ಅಸಹ್ಯ ಉಂಟಾಗುತ್ತಲ್ವಾ ದೇಹದಿಂದ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಬಿದ್ದಂತಹ ವಾಂತಿ ನೋಡಕ್ಕೂ ಅಸಹ್ಯ ಅದನ್ನ ಮುಟ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅಸಹ್ಯ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಹಾಗೆ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಈ ದೇಹವನ್ನು ದೂರ ಮಾಡು ಅನ್ನು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ವಿತ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅ ಟ್ರೂ ನೇಚರ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ which is permanent eternal only one sadvastu always blissful it is paramananda swarupa then give up this body attachment throw this upadi that you are the body this body is a jada this body is ultimately it is going to be destroyed it will decompose itself after the death so either it is buried or it is burnt once the jeeva gets away from the body once a death occurs nobody will like the dead body to be with them forever in their homes they will throw it away they burn it away or they bury it depending on their concepts uh, religious beliefs like that you throw the body out in the sense acharya what he means here he gives an example look my dear disciple see when the due to unknown reasons supposing after eating when somebody vomits out see the vomit when it comes out of the body you yourself you are you feel highly dejected to look at that or even to think on that if you try to remember your own vomit you become totally disgust you don't associate the mind becomes disturbed when you look at your own vomit when you vomit something out you can't even see that what is there on the ground it's a common knowledge so do you recollect and do you remember your own vomit every time you become fully disgustful even to think of the word vomit like that a jani is disgusted to think about his own body that he is because he knows he is no more the body the body is a upadi for a jani he knows that he is a pure atma swarupa stuck in this body made up of five elements body made up of five pancha mahabhutas which is going to be destroyed today or today or tomorrow so that is the point so don't think too much of the body don't give too much importance to the body because whatever vomit we vomit out even the the very thinking of the vomit brings only disgust in our mind 
अथ पुनरपिन स्मरियताम वातवस्तु स्मरण विषय भूत कलते कुत्सुना स्मरण विषय भूत वातवस्तु कुत्सुनाय कलते यू 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 द मोमेंट वर्ड वॉमिट एंटर्स युअर माइंड even before looking your own vomit whatever you have vomited out on the ground you feel totally disgusted like that like that don't be too much attached to the body that's the main the inner point don't be too much attached to the body now <clears throat> like uh, digress here to explain this point last time at the fag end of the discourse this point was there there was no much time to explain please pardon me if i try to explain little more on this see how how atma jnani is brahma jnani is behave and how common people ajnanis we behave about our own body. see we are bound by our body mind now we are with the ego we are with the sharira abhimana but as a jnani a realized master he is beyond the sharira abhimana his ego is destroyed he no more considers himself as a body physical body which includes subtle body and of course causal body is cut karana sharira is totally cut the ajnana is gone avidya has gone that is the primordial ignorance ever since so many births that is gone for a jnani now why ajari is harping on this point about the physical body why he is concentrating on this why he is advising his disciple please remember these are the instructions to the highly qualified disciple given by adi shankaracharya 1200 years before to the highest qualified disciple he is giving the so these instructions normally generally not meant for a common man that is a problem as a ajnani as a common man when i try to sit and understand viveka chudamani certain things will not enter our head because we are equating ourselves as i am so and so i have a name and a status and a fame i have a responsibility i am a married person i am a householder i am a common man i am a businessman i am a highly intellectual i am a company director etc etc so i have the set feeling and i think i have a lot of duties in the life lot of aspirations in life lot of desires in life i have to fulfill so many desires i have i have a family to run i have people to look after i have my children to look after i have my husband or wife to look after i have my parents to look after all, all these things we are bound by in the worldly sense at the worldly level that is true but look at the mahatmas look at the brahmavits look at the realized ones i'll give you one or two small example to make this point very clear very briefly See, at the time of Mahasamadhi, in 1950s, I am talking 1950, in Tiruvannamalai, if you go through the life history of Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi, every one of us we know how Bhagavan, the realized master himself, a great Paramajnani himself, a great Advaita in himself, how he conducted himself about his own body, he was totally aloof. Totally alone. When it was discovered that there is a cancerous growth on the upper arm, the left 
aparam the devotees they were very much disgusted they were you know they became restless that bhagwan got a cancer on the aparam but bhagwan never bothered too much on that and uh, they convinced him to undergo the operation in those days whatever available operation so the tumor was growing and giving lot of problems you know it was so painful bhagwan never complained on that and they forced him to undergo an operation and for the sake of the devotee he said okay yes and again after a few months the tumor again came back the cancerous tumor malignant tumor came back again the devotee is forced and forced and forced and requested big bhagwan ramana maharshi to go for second out even for that ultimately he conceded and at at one point he said you people are giving too much importance to this part this body itself is a disease to me he said i may not be able to quote exact tamil words quoted by bhagwan just time offering to you you are giving too much importance to this part bhagwan said this body itself is a disease to me but he conceded for because of the forcible constant repeated pleas made by the devotees and for their sake the compassionate bhagwan went in for the second surgery for the cancerous tumorous growth and also he had the knee joint pain all the time due to the effects of the old age of the physical body and he never complained about that to anyone see that is how they they remained nirlipta nirvikara totally unconcerned about their own body no doubt devotees are more concerned but the jnani himself is no more concerned about his own body or physical body look at the final stages before mahasamadhi of ram sri ramkrishna parama he had a throat cancer even swallowing became difficult even liquid food could not go because of the such powerful pain in the throat and smilingly he suffered smilingly he suffered he never considered himself as a body and if you recently go into the life history of shri nisargadatt maharaj from mumbai who took mahasamadhi in i think in 1981 in mumbai he was having a throat cancer in the final stages of his lifetime he never bothered too much on that is there all examples recorded example how mahatmas look upon their own body least bother no sharira abhimana and for the sake of clarity which i am a witness to myself i'll give you about our gurudev's nature he realized brahma jnani how our gurudev treated his own body see that is very important he had a sciatica pain which i know personally he never professed to anyone even sitting for a long time standing for a long time was with with great pain it used to create on the the right thigh from the right pelvic girdle downwards up to the right foot tremendous pain because of the nerve pull sciatic nerve it is called in medical term sciatica sciatica pain he suffered that pain without telling anyone and later there was a neuropathy in the legs because of that and several times he fell down while getting up from the bed or while trying to stand up on the ground from the bed he fell down number of times number of times not once or twice nobody knows he told me privately in on one occasion he just 
he got up and fell down and for the next 45 minutes there was terrific pain but he never uttered a word and he was immobile helpless not in a condition to move he was on the ground till after 40 minutes or so when the one attendant came to his kutira and saw the gurudev fallen flat on the ground immediately he was attended to and uh, most of our devotees don't know that our gurudev had hernia problem for 3 4 years he never told anyone that he has hernia problem the perforation of the abdominal area where through the small intestines loops they just hang down hernia problem with so much pain and uh, he used to tell me that he will tie a cloth around his lower waist body to control this further you know hernia enlarging the perforation should not uh, become so enlarged that the whole of the small intestine will drag down later by you know he never he never went for any operation he never went for any consultation he always refused any allopathic consultation but when we convinced that at least for hernia operation is required so that not only the pain factor even the normal agility the movement of the person which is totally affected by hernia that can come back it is a very minor operation so with great too much of perseverance persuasion convincing methods he was brought in by then the additional chief secretary of the karnataka state and mr pandey and mr kp rao the surgeon in the at that time it is called narayan hrudayala run by dr devi shetty on the vasu road on the near electronic city beyond electronic city area towards vasu main road there is a famous hospital called now it is called narayana health city it is run by dr devi shetty a noble soul a famous hospital he was brought into that and he, with a only condition our gurudev said for your sake i come over there but i will not be an inpatient you just conduct the operation i'll run away i'll come back to my kutira people said yes and he was brought in operation was done after operation he was taken to a vip suit room for resting purpose he was there only for 1 hour or 1 and 1/2 hours in the vip suit of the hospital then he left he said i'll go back meanwhile i remember very well dr devi shetty the founder head of narayana health city the famous hospital in bangalore he came down all the way to the room where gurudev was resting after operation dr devi shetty removed his shoes entered the room with a folded hands prostrated to our gurudev and dr devi shetty said that such a great mahatman has visited our hospital for some treatment and we are all highly blessed See, that is a reverence that is a reverence and gurudev blessed him and immediately left he never bothered never bothered about the body i still remember funnily one small incident after uh, the remaining few teeth when gurudev wanted them to be extracted completely we went to the dentist he removed all the teeth and then prescribed so many medicines including antibiotic to be taken for the next 3 4 days and lot of tablets were given to our gurudev and gurudev when he returned to the kutiram from bangalore he threw away all the allopathic drugs given by the dental doctor all the drugs he did not consume a single tablet and he was all right 
No, these are these things I am telling you. How jnanis are not concerned more as we are concerned about our body. We are beyond that. What is bare necessity required for maintenance of the body, they will do that. As per the Karabdha, body has to sustain, body has to live, body has to eat, body has to efficate, body has to excrete. Accordingly, some food has to go to the body for the energy purpose. That much they do. Whatever basic necessities that is carried out by a jnani like you and me, but the desire is not there. The passion is not there. Pampering the body is not there. Giving too much importance to their own body, it is not there in any jnani. That is the difference. That is the difference. See, that is what Acharya is hinting here in these slokas. So at the time of the dawn of the jnana and after the attainment of the jnana, when a realization occurs, when a jnana dawns in, when sakshatkara occurs, how a jnani behaves, that is what Bhagavad Pada is telling here. He is not telling from your and my point of view. We may not appreciate and understand what Bhagavad Pada is telling. He is referring to the, the purest of the pure, Vishuddha Sattva mental state of a Paramajnani. That is a point we have to remember here so that uh, we will understand these things so well. I can add one small more, one more point here to make it very clear. Even in Bhagavad Gita, even in Bhagavad Gita, in the third chapter, Karma Yoga, while talking about the nature of jnana and talking about a jnani, Lord Krishna Paramatma tells Arjuna, he uses so many words in the entire course of 700 shlokas in Bhagavad Gita about a jnani. At one place, he calls a jnani as a Buddha. At one place, he calls him as Panditaha. At one place, he calls him as Samadarshi. At one place, he calls him as Sitaprajna. At one place, he calls him as Tattvavit. These are all words used by Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita to denote a Jnani or a realized master. Jnani here means the one who has realized his true nature, his own sorrow. In the third chapter, there is a famous slope. Arjuna was told, Lord says to Arjuna about how a jnani behaves in the world and how it differs from others. Tattva vittu mahabaho guna karma vibhaga yoho guna guneshu vartanta iti matvana sajyate Tattva vittu mahabaho guna karma vibhaga yoho guna guneshu vartante If you spread there, it becomes vartante. Guna guneshu vartante iti matvana sajyate iti matvana sajyate sajyate tattva vit na sajyate There is a point where Lord says like that. Bhagavad Gita is held with it. Jnani hai girtane Bhagavad Gita is held with it. Jnani hai girtane Tundre Ata guna karma gala vibhaga da bhagya channa ge artha kundirtane guna gado guna gada le yavri iti vartani torsatve and atani gottirte Ata adar le yendu sikhi haki kullo dinda iti matva na sajjate Ata nirlipta na girtane guna gado guna gada le yavri iti vartani madatte and dano da atani gottirodhirinda Ata adar modi ge sikha kullo de ili So what uh, in that shloka Krishna, Lord Par Krishna Paramatma is telling a wise man knowing that everything is 
modification of only one prakriti everything the sentient world the world which appears everything living non living put together is a modification of only one prakriti nature knowing it to be the interaction of the tanmatras as sense organs and motor organs on one side and the sense objects on the other side so it is the interaction jnani knows always the perception of the world is only in interaction between the sense organs on one side that is the subject and the subjective points <coughs> the five gross elements and their modifications on the other side which appear as object so it is the interaction between the object and the subject between the person and the scene guna guneshu vartante iti matva na sajjate so these interactions jnani knows will bewitch your mind for a common man so he is beyond that knowingly well that this interaction guna guneshu vartante iti matva na sajjate a jnani is no more affected no more influenced so he is no more attached iti matva na sajjate guna guneshu vartante iti matva na sajjate that is bhagavad gita third chapter see the point here is there is a lot of difference in the perception of the perceived world from the standpoint of a jnani and from the standpoint of a common jnani so this is the distinction we have to always remember. always we have to remember this distinction so he continues i tell you continue समूल नौ सदात्मनी ब्रह्मणी निर्विकल्पे तत स्वयं नित्य विशुद्ध बोधा आनंदात्मना विद्वरिष्ट समूल नौ सदात्मनी ब्रह्मणी निर्विकल्पे तत स्वयं नित्य विशुद्ध बोधा आनंदात्मना विद्वरिष्ट ोदानंद आत्मना तिष्ठते विद्वरिष्ट की वर्ड्स इन दि श्लोक ऐन हेल्ता आचार्य श्लोक विद्वरिष्ट आचार्य इज यूजिंग दिस प्लीज रिमेबर प्लीज लिजन केरफुल विद्वरिष्ट आचार्य इज यूजिंग दिस वर्ड अंद्रे ब्रह्मज्ञानी अत्यंत उत्तमोत्तम ब्रह्मज्ञानी अपरूप ब्रह्मज्ञानी अपरूप ब्रह्मज्ञानी यारो विद्वरिष्ठ वेदात संपूर्ण ज्ञान सप्त भूमिके को भूमि ऐलने भूमि अब ब्रह्म विद्वरिष्ठ स्थिति अंत वेदात ब्रह्म विद्वरिष्ठ स्थिति अथवा तुर्यग ज्ञान ऐलने भूमिके को भूमिके अद्वान आचार्य क्लुप्त विद्वरिष्ठ अंत ब्रह्मज्ञानी अत्यंत अपरूप 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 ब्रह्म विद्वरिष्ठन ज्ञानी तरीरव अरे स्थूल देह सूक्ष्म देह कारण देह इवेलूर्विकल ब्रह्मेब अग्नियल आत सुखी ब्रह्म ज्ञान उंटू तान तान कड़चकोद्र तु संपूर्ण परशुद्ध परिपूर्ण ज्ञानानंद स्वरूप सदा निर्विकल आनंद स्थित निनंद स्थित आत विवरता भ्रमस्ताने क्रीडे ब्रह्मज्ञानी अर्थ 
ಇದೇ ಮಾತನ್ನ ವಿಶದೀಕರಿಸಿ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇಂದ್ರರು ಈ ಒಂದು ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತು ಇನ್ನೂರು ವರ್ಷಗಳ ಹಿಂದೆ ತಮಿಳುನಾಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗಿ ಹೋದಂತ ಮಹಾನ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪರು ಯತಿವರಣ್ಯರು ಅವಧೂತ ಶಿಖಾಮಣಿಗಳು ಆದಂತಹ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇಂದ್ರರು ತಮ್ಮದೇ ಆದಂತಹ ರಚನೆಯಾದಂತಹ ಆತ್ಮವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿಲಾಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತತೆಯ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತನ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಪರಮ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಯ ಲಕ್ಷಣ ಆತನ ವಿಲಕ್ಷಣವಾದ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತಾನಂದವನ್ನು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಅನುಭವಿಸ್ತಾನೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಬಹಳ ವಿಷದವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆತ್ಮವಿದ್ಯೆ ವಿಲಾಸ ಅದನ್ನ ಸೂಕ್ಷ್ಮವಾಗಿ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಮೂಲ ಮೇತತ್ ಪರಿದಷ್ಟ್ಯ ವಸ್ನೌ ಸದಾತ್ಮನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪೆ ತತ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಶುದ್ಧ ಬೋಧಾನಂದಾತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ವಿದ್ವರಿಷ್ಟ ಸದಾ ವಿದ್ವರಿಷ್ಟ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಶುದ್ಧ ಬೋಧಾನಂದಾತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ಸದಾಕಾಲ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಾರವಾದಂತಹ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪವಾದಂತಹ ಸತ್ಸ್ವರೂಪವಾದಂತಹ ಪರಿಶುದ್ಧ ಪೂರ್ಣಾನಂದ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಜಾನಂದ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಶುದ್ಧ ಜ್ಞಾನಾನಂದ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿಯು ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಈ ಶರೀರವನ್ನು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಶರೀರ ಅಭಿಮಾನವನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣವಾಗಿ ಶರೀರವನ್ನು ದಹಸಿ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಹೊಡೆದಾಕಿ ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ಅಮೂಲ ಮೇತತ್ ಪರಿದಹ್ಯ ಭಕ್ನೋ ಸದಾತ್ಮನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ವೇರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಬಿಹೇವ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆನ್ಲೋಕರ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅಜ್ಞಾನಿಸ್ what is the difference between ajnanis and ajnani he is using the word first time vidvarishtaha in this shloka samoola metat paridahya vahnau sadatmani brahmane nirvikalpe tata swayam nitya vishuddha boda nandatmana tishthati vidvarishtaha in vedanta there are seven levels of jnana bhumika is called sapta jnana bhumika and the seventh one the highest one is called brahma vid varishta sthiti the seventh one seventh jnana bhumika as per vedanta it is called brahma vid varishta sthiti also it is called turyaga in our common sense it can be referred as avadhuta sthiti so what ashir is telling here such a brahma vidvarishtah the highest knower of the truth the very few realized masters very few jivan muktas according to the prarabdha of their sharira in this birth will exhibit that type of avadhuta sthiti that is referred as brahma vidvarishta sthiti turyaga sthiti not all brahma jnanis will reach that state a very few as ordained by the divine sankalpa by the ishvara sankalpa they exhibit those manifestations of brahma vidvarishta sthiti so what has happened here ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಸಮೂಲ ಮೇ ತತ್ ಪರಿದಹ್ಯ ಭಕ್ನೌ ಸದಾತ್ಮನಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪೆ ತತ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಶುದ್ಧ ಬೋಧಾನಂದ ಆತ್ಮನ ತಿಷ್ಠತಿ ವಿದ್ವರಿಷ್ಟ ಸೊ ದ ಸಚ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ನೋಯರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂತ್ ಸಚ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರಿಷ್ಠ ಸಚ ಅವಧೂತ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಫರ್ಮ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಎನ್ ಐಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೌಟ್ ರಿಮೈನ್ಸ್ ಟೋಟಲಿ ಫರ್ಮ್ಲಿ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ as the eternal pure blissful atma swarupa as eternal pure blissful satyagatma swarupa after burning his body consciousness in jnana agni 
At the time of the dawn of the jnana, the body consciousness, sharira abhimana is totally burnt. That's what Acharya is telling you. After burning the body consciousness in the jnana agni, he becomes firmly established in his atma surya. Totally. Lord Krishna Paramatma uses one word for the same purpose in Bhagavad Gita. They are called, such jnanis are called jnanagdi dagdha karmanaha. Jnanagdi dagdha karmanaha. Lord says in Bhagavad Gita that the realized masters, they appear like burnt seeds. Normal seeds, normal seeds, if you sow in the soil, add proper nourishment, manure and watering properly, the seed sown in the soil may germinate into a new plant. Whereas a burnt seed, totally fried seed, if you sow in the soil, how much water you add and nourishment you add, that fried, burnt out seed cannot germinate into a new plant. So that is the adjective used in Bhagavad Gita. So the realized masters are called Jnanagni Dhagda Karmana. All their karmas are burnt. So their body consciousness is burnt anymore. No more they consider themselves as a body anymore. So that is one point here to remember. <clears throat> Again a small digression in this case. Vedanta Dali, Sapta Jnana Bhumi Kagavati, Bhala Kluptavagi, Chikadagi Adrabagi Matra Hedabekundre, Hala Dutta Sapta, Hala Vishadavadanta, Ghanavada Gambiravada Vishya. Sapta Jnana Bhumi Kagavundri, Modala Muru, Jnana the Metilagulu, A Jnana the Leir Takanta Metil, other Jnana Bhumi Kim Esra. Andre, Modelina Muru, Stiti Diella, a Giana de Lenadion, a Giana de Lair Tacanta, the Yaudu, Model Nedu, Shubecha Yer Nedu, Suvicharana, Mur Nedu, Tanumanosa Shubechan under Paramatman Bagi, the Kin Hagi Manasnale asked non Paramatman on the bed. Suvicharana under Paramatman Bagi, Chintan, Athan Tatu Chintane. Adhyatma summoned the Grantagala Patana, Shavana, Manana, Villa Bandurta. Guru in the Shavana Matumanan, Suvichar Murne Hanta, Tanumanasa, Tanumanasa Antandre, Saria the Rethi, Guru in the Anugrahakanagi, Tana Hanavana, Guru Margarashan of the Lee, Tampurna Guru Vega Sharanagatanagi, Tana. Even the Parama Buddhishavana Sazas Liki, Parama Pursharthamana Sazas Liki, Martha Kanta Adhyat Masadan, the Numana Sazas. Ado Japa, Hana, India, even the Prakregal, the Bumble. E Muro, Antagoro, a Jnana the Bumikil Takanta Antagor, Iliniano Patil. The Numana Nanta, Martha Kanta City Dian. Nirantarvada Abhyasa Dinda, Jhana Dinda, Japa Dinda, Shavana Manana Nididhyasananda Adhyartha, Nididhyasananda Dhyana Prakri, Avagada Nantara, Vandu Shubha Sandrabadali Jnana Diyah Vunta Agatala Paramatmana Krupe Inda, Atwa Sadguru Vini Krupe Inda, Adho Nalakne Bhumi, Satvapatti Yen Thesiradak, Yedanta Dhu, Satvapatti. Brahma with Brahma with and the Hesu Adu Nalakne Nalakne Bhumike Bandaga Jano Patiai. He becomes real. Nantara Idu Aru Yolu Yavu Aidnedu Brahma with Varastiti Arnedu Brahma with Variyas Titi Yelene de Brahma with Varishtas Titi.
ಸತ್ವಾಪತ್ತಿ ಆದ ನಂತರ ಐದನೇದು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ್ವರ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹೆಸರು ಅಸಂಸಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಮುಂದಿನ ಆರನೇ ಭೂಮಿಕೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ್ವರೀಯ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಹೆಸರು ಪದಾರ್ಥ ಭಾವನ ಏಳನೆಯದು ಕೊನೆಯದು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿತ್ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಹೆಸರು ತುಣಿಯಕ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಭೂಮಿಕೆಗಳು ವೇದಾಂತದಲ್ಲಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳ ವರ್ತನೆಗಳು ನಡವಳಿಕೆಗಳು ಅವರ ರೀತಿ ನೀತಿಗಳನ್ನ ನೋಡಿ ವಿಂಗಡಣೆ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಯಾವುದು ಕಡಿಮೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆನೆ ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಐದು ಆರು ಏಳು ಈ ನಾಲ್ಕು ಜ್ಞಾನ ಭೂಮಿಕೆಗಳು ಇವೆಲ್ಲವೂ ತಮ್ಮ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯನ್ನು ತೋರಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯನ್ನು ತೋರಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಆದರೆ ಅವುಗಳ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಿಂದ ಆ ಜ್ಞಾನಿಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲವು ಭೇದಗಳು ಕಂಡು ಬರುತ್ತೆ So the seven Bhumikas, known as Sapta Jnana Bhumikas in Vedanta, the first three are at the level of Ajnana only. Why? Because realization will not occur. The first Bhumika, the first level is called Shubhecha. Shubhecha means the desire to know God, to understand God suddenly comes up. it is spiritual desire not religious suddenly you want to know about god where is god how is god what is god mind becomes totally involved in such questions you start reading you start meeting people you start discussing people with people then you start searching a guru in that direction that is very shubhecha that is first level i remember here bhagwan ramana maharishi once made a very beautiful very simple very short very precise very pertinent very meaningful state you know what he said bhagwan ramana maharishi said even to think about god god's grace is required i repeat even to think about god earnestly god's grace is required so that is shubhech first level then suvicharan then the inquiry self inquiry commences who i am i what is my purpose why i am born where i am going to lead what happens after death do i come back what is my real purpose who i am i really am i this body or not am i something inside what is the jiva inside what is the soul is all such questions will start second level that is called suvichar then you start searching a guru you here and there here and there you start reading all spiritual books by yourself it is as if you are pulled from inside you are goaded from inside automatically your mind whenever there is free time you automatically you run behind godly books saintly books you start searching for saints you start searching for gnanis you start searching for gurus there is second level first level shubhecha second level suvicha then by the grace of god in this birth in this birth itself if you come across a realize master who accepts you as a disciple or a devotee then your third level bhumika will come that is tanumanas then shavana manana nidhi dhyasana will continue then as ordained by the guru you start doing your spiritual sadhana earnestly 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 you start doing the japa you start doing the mantra japa or you start doing meditation as guided by the guru as so as per your inner call you get involved gradually gradually seriously see that is the third level tanumanas so up to this level vedanta say all the first three levels are the, in the mode of ajnana nasiyas 
They are all in the mode of Ajnana. Even meditation is in Ajnana mode only. Please remember, it is very difficult for me to explain further and further and further. It will take a lot of time. Even when I say I am meditating by the grace of Guru, even when you say daily I am meditating by the grace of my Guru, yes, I am doing Japa every day, yes. But all this we have to remember as Vedanta declares, Acharyas declare that they are all in the mode of Ajnana only. It is all happening at the worldly consciousness level. It is all play of the worldly consciousness. That is what called Ajnana mode. Even when I say I am doing meditation, it is Ajnana only. When I say I am doing Japa, it is Ajnana only because that body consciousness is there here. I say I am. I say I am doing. I am doing this, I am doing that. Just like I am eating this, I am drinking that. I say boastfully, cheerfully that I am doing meditation, I am doing Japa, I am doing Mantra Japa, I do Mantra Japa for two hours in a day, I sit for meditation for more than one hour a day. See, I, I, I. So again, it is in the mode of Ajnana. So uh, the first three levels of the Saptajnana Bhomika, they come under the heading Saptajnana Bhomika. But Vedanta says the first three steps or levels are in not Jnana Bhomika, they are in Ajnana mode only. Because we are bound by avidya. At the individual level, at the some vesti level, I am bound by maya, which is called avidya, primary ignorance, pramada. What is the ignorance? What is that false impression I have? False identification I have? That I am the body. So that is the primary implicit. False identification. That is Ajnana, ignorance. So the first three, which one? Shubhecha, Suvicharana, second one, Tanumanasa, all the three come under modes of Ajnana. So I don't know whether I am more confusing, whether these words, the highest levels of Vedantic knowledge, whether it is being fruitful. For people who are listening this discourse, I have no idea. I only sincerely pray that let there be no more inability for me to convey what I really wanted to convey in the sense what Guru from my body wants to convey to all of us, including myself. So, at this level, Sloka number 414. I'm stopping here by the Guru Sankalpa. I'll continue this. Sapta Jnana Bhumika is a long subject in the next discourse. I think there it will be clicked. I hope it will be more. So, <coughs> with the Guru Sankalpa, today's discourse I'm stopping it here. Sri Rama Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama 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 Hari Om Namo Bhagavate Vira Hari Om Sir this was beautiful with a lot of anecdotes from Ramana Maharshi and uh, of course our own Guru Deva. Thank you for sharing those. They are invaluable. Hari Om, sir. Hari Om. So these are all perils of wisdom coming out by the grace of the Guru. Amazing, sir. Thank you for sharing them. You are so Thank blessed you. to be having, having experienced that yourself. That, that's such a blessing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So next week. Yes.